Hello, Pekka Yavos with Rabbeinu Yonah. We are on chapter 3, Mishnah 11. Gimel Yid Aleph. Rabbi Elazar Hamodai Omer. Rabbi Elazar, the... from Modai. He says, Hamachal es hakachim, hamavaza es hamoados. Someone who profanes holy things, referring to the holy things in the temple. Hamavaza es hamoados. And someone who denigrates the festivals. Hamalben pinei chaveo barabim. Someone who embarrasses his friend in public. And someone who nullifies the, his covenant with the covenant of Abraham. And someone who perverts Torah contrary to the law. Even if he has Torah and good deeds, he's done Torah and good deeds, if he does any of these things, he does not have a share in the world to come. Wow. Let's read Rebbeinu to see what all of these things are. We have to avoid them because they're very serious. A person doesn't get a share in the world to come. So, what does it mean, Hamachal es Hakachim? Somebody who uh, profanes Kachim, holy things related to the temple. Zem Bafagalas Hakachim Umetama. This is someone who makes holy things impure, or he has certain incorrect thoughts when doing the temple service. Echa Kachim Hamizbech, Echa Kachim Bedekabais. Whether it's holy things that are brought as sacrifices, or holy things that are dedicated in a monetary way to the temple. Someone who desecrates them, profanes them, does not have a share in the world to come. What does it mean, someone who denigrates the festivals? So first of all, why are we putting the festivals next to holy things in the temple? So he says, because they're both called kachim, they're both called holy. But kachim ksev, but holy things in the temple. It says kodesh kadashim, holy of holies. Over moados ksev, when it talks about the holidays, ela moade Hashem asher tikro sam mikra e kodesh. These are the holidays of Hashem, which you will call them holy. Elohim moadai, these are my holidays. Vamachal es shteim. So there, we put them next to each other. The holidays are called holy, just like things related to the temple are called holy. Vamachal es shteim. Someone who profanes both of them, elo chelak lo nemhaba. He does not have a share in the world to come. Bibnei shechil kachim Hashem, because he profaned. Holy things of God. These things are holy to God. So if someone does, if someone profanes them, he doesn't have a share in the world to come. This is what the sages say. Whoever profanes the festivals, it is like he worships idols. Shinemar, as it says, You should not make gods of, not make idols for you. And it says right after about the prohibition of not making idols. As Chag Matzos Tishmor, you should guard the festival of Matzos. So since the Torah places the prohibition of worshipping idols next to the mitzvah to keep the holiday of Pesach, we see that someone who doesn't treat the holidays correctly, properly, it's like he worships idols. The Amar Bekan Hamavaza. Now here we use the word Mavaza instead of Hamechalel. First the Mishnah said when it came to holy things, Mechalel, which means profane. When it said by the holidays, it says mavaza to denigrate. What's the difference? Because there's a reason we're not talking here in the Mishnah about the Yom Tov holiday itself. We don't have to. It doesn't need to be said that there's a big punishment for someone who desecrates the festivals themselves. Yom Tov Shabbos because the festivals are like Shabbos, and we know that the Torah places a supreme importance on the observance of Shabbos and the punishments for not keeping it. So Yantiv, the, the holy days of Yantiv are like Shabbos. Elo b'cholo shamoid medaber. We're talking about cholomoid. Cholomoid is the intermediary days of the festivals. Between Sukkot and, and Pesach, the first days and the last days of Sukkot and Pesach are holy days. They're days when we don't work at all. We don't drive. We don't uh, do other things similar to Shabbos. Not exactly like Shabbos, but similar to Shabbos. And cholomoid are the intermediary days when most Labor is permiss- permitted, but people don't realize there are still labors which are per- per- uh, prohibited on Cholomoid. This person says, even those few laws, those few laws that I have to keep on the intermediate days of Pesach and Sokas, I'm not going to keep them. I'm not going to observe the few labors which are prohibited on those days. 
He said, these intermediate days, they don't have as much holiness as the beginning and the end days. Yes, I'll come so do whatever I want. But Toeva would say, he does an abomination. He doesn't embarrass to do such a thing. So someone who does that and says, you know what, yeah, I'll keep the main days of the holiday, but I'm not, I'm not going to worry about the intermediate days. You know, there's like a less, there's a lower level of prohibition of the work you can do, so I'm just going to do whatever I feel like. Such a person does not have a share in the world to come. Pretty serious. But Mayfair Brizzo shall Abner someone who nullifies the covenant of Abraham. Zaha Moshech or Laso Lechasas Hatar. This is somebody who you know, the, he takes his foreskin and he makes it look like he doesn't have a bris. Venir Ka'aral to make it look like he was never circumcised. Kamisha Osa Lahakas Kadil Habzu Samitsis. Now why is this so bad? Because he's doing it. What kind of what kind of person would do such a weird, disgusting thing to do that? A person who he's coming to fight with Hashem. He's a mumr lahachas, what's, co- uh, what's called. A mumr lahachas is someone who doesn't keep the mitzvahs, not because he has the Yetzirah, not because he has a desire to do something wrong. That's one thing, right? A person has a desire to eat non-kosher and he couldn't control himself. That's one thing, right? He believes in God. He wasn't doing it because he hates Hashem. He's doing it because he was hungry and he, uh, his Yetzirah overpowered him. Here we're talking about somebody who's not keeping the mitzvah because he hates God. So you know what, God? This is what I think of your mitzvah. He had a bris and he's making it look like he never had a bris. So such a person does not have a chilek in Olam Haba, doesn't have a portion of the world to come. There's no comparison between someone who knows what the right thing to do is and he's trying to do the right thing and he just sometimes slips up. We're all human beings, we all slip up. Such a person is infinitely better. No comparison to a person who says, you know what, God, I hate your commandments and I'm not going to keep them. Can't even compare it, even though they're both doing it on purpose. They're both not keeping the commandments on purpose. The motivation behind it makes it so much different. Okay. Next, next person that doesn't have a share in the world to come, somebody who uh, embarrasses his friend in public. This is one, this is a, a tolda, a subcategory of the categories of things that a person has to die rather than violate. We'll see. What are the avos? What are the main categories? Idolatry certain types of uh, sexual promiscuity, sexual relations, and murder. So, if someone tells you, I'm going to kill you unless you eat a ham sandwich, that you're supposed to eat a ham sandwich, but if someone tells you, I'm going to kill you unless you commit this act of sexual immorality, or if you murder this person, or if you worship this idol, a person has to give their life rather than commit these sins. Now, those are the main sins, but there's told us there are Subcategories. Told us about Azara, Atsiyashera, for example. What's a subcategory of idol worship? Using the tree of an Ashera tree. People used to worship this tree, an Ashera tree. Kedam Rinan, Bakol Misrap, Machutz Me Atsiyashera. Alpha Pisha, Ena Shera, Vodazara, Atsma, Elamitash Misha, Yarag Vilyavar, Kodim Shianu Mimana. It says, so let's say a person needs to get better. He's going to die unless he uses this uh, Ashera tree, this type of tree to get better. He needs it to save his life. He's not allowed to use it, even though it's only a something that was used for idolatry and not the idolatry itself. Tolz Gili Rais. What's the subcategory of Gili Rais, of sexual immorality? Looking or speaking to a married woman. A person has to give his life before he does it. Meaning, even not just having relations with her. Obviously, it sounds like it means... Uh, okay. Sounds like it uh, doesn't mean just asking directions or something like that. Who of the Masechah Sanhedrin? Like it says in Sanhedrin, Pemisha al Balibo Tino, a person has a certain illness. Shaam Rasham, they said to him, Tamud Lefan of Aruma. Stand, if this woman would stand before him naked, he would get better. So this married woman says, Yamos Val Tamud Lefan of Aruma. So it's better that he dies than have this woman do that. Tasaprimo Meachar together. Just speak to her behind the fence. Yamos Val Tasaprimo Meachar together. Don't, uh, better to die than just speak to her from behind the fence. So we see that it's not only the relations themselves with a married woman that carry these strict penalties, but even these other things, which are just staring at her, it sounds like staring at her with a, you know, again, not for enjoyment or for um, just speaking for her for no reason, speaking with her for no reason. Such a thing is Yarag a person should give his life before doing it. Okay, but told the Shvi Chastam, now what about the subcategory of murder? This is someone who embarrasses his friend in public. When you embarrass, embarrass someone, the blood drains from their face. Like we said, he was red, now he's white. Somebody who does this does not have a share in the world to come. So 
if someone's given a choice, embarrass your friend publicly or die, according to this, a person has to give up his life. And for someone for sure that um, embarrass someone in public loses a share in the world to come. Now, it's very important that everyone hears the end of this. Don't get nervous. If, you, if someone has done one of these sins in the past, don't get nervous. I mean, yeah, Vahamagala Panim Betora. Zeham, what does it mean to uh, pervert the words of Torah? Zehu amaze klape Torah pana blasas of Ezra Vesri. This is somebody who does sins in public. If you're going to do a sin, you don't want people to see you. Do it privately. But this guy, he doesn't care who sees him. He hates Hashem, so he does sins in public. Vahu adin lamaze pana klape lamda. Or somebody who denigrates Torah scholars, that's also very, very bad. A person who denigrates Torah scholars loses his share in the world to come. So, and we say, anyone who does any of these sins, even if he's done good deeds and studied a lot of Torah, he doesn't have a share in the world to come. Now, who doesn't have a share in the world to come? This is only someone who's done these things and never repented. And he died in pain. Because when a person dies, even if he had a tragic death, a very painful death, it doesn't erase the sins. But when he repents... When he repents from these sins, nothing can prevent you, and nothing can be very repentance. This is what it says in the Gemara. So, all of these things that we listed, they're very bad. A person who desecrates holy things, a person who denigrates the holidays, someone who embarrasses somebody else, someone who nullifies the covenant of Abraham, someone who embarrasses somebody else, and somebody who denigrates the Torah, it does by sinning in public, or denigrating Torah scholars, such a person doesn't have a share in the world to come. But if he does tshuva, if he does repentance, then he could do, then he will have a share in the world to come. Now obviously repentance has to be heartfelt. It can't just be uh, words. Hashem, Hashem knows when we mean something and when we're faking it. So we can't, can't trick God. Okay, wishing everyone a great day.